everybody, hey, welcome to a special Thursday night edition on Friday of the American Sci-Fi Classics Tracks <laughs> Quarantine Panels. We're still calling them that. We haven't come up with a better name. Um, here is what we're doing because tonight is, or today rather, is the 90th anniversary to the day of the U.S. release of the 1933 King Kong movie. Um, to some people, that's the only King Kong movie, and I understand. We'll, we'll get it's to that. Best. Yeah. <laughs> so what, what, what I wanted to what I wanted to do is let me introduce or let them introduce themselves, our resident ape experts, starting one internet to my left, uh, Mr. Mark Finn. Hi, everybody. My name is Mark. I am a writer and an editor, and I live above a movie theater, which makes me technically cooler than most of you. <laughs> that That is correct, yes. <laughs> and one internet south of me. Mr. Rick Claw. Um, wow, so is it like I'm in hell? Is that what you're trying to tell yes. me? I'm down in Yes, you okay. are. Um, yes, I'm not as cool as Mark, probably not as cool as Joe, but I do know a lot about King Kong. I've written about King Kong in several different places over the years. Um, I edited a book called The Apes of Wrath, which had its 10th anniversary last month. And it was a, a liter literary exploration of apes. But it also had stuff on film and the stuff film. And Mark wrote an essay about the Gorilla Men, which have nothing to do with King Kong. <laughs> At least most people think it doesn't, but there's a whole discussion right. about that. And, um, and I also wrote a thing about film in that same book. Uh, so, yeah. And Mark and I have been having this discussion probably for like 35 years, probably mm -hmm. since about 93, I think. When we first met, yeah, 92, 93. Yeah, it, it feels like it feels like about that time. If you if you've ever seen us both at an armadillo con or uh, some some other Anywhere. convention, <laughs> we're, we're probably <laughs> having this conversation either formally, as in like at three o'clock in the Millard Fillmore room, or <laughs> just kind of in general. <laughs> it's a it's a it's a yeah, conversation it's, that we lift the arm and drop the needle on uh, periodically as we go. You're catching. Uh, just yeah, I was trying a, to figure out. You're catching Sorry, just Joe, a what? snippet of it right now. Yeah, like right. an hour of it. Exactly. I was trying to figure out how long we met together before we start talking about King Kong. Probably, I don't know, an hour maybe. It depends. <laughs> well, it depends on where we are in the movie release cycle, and and the Godzilla <laughs> uh, uh, movies are sort of like the Mercury and retrograde version of that. So, you know, we yeah. basically have two chances in the celestial architecture to bring it up uh, at any given time. I don't know if there's ever a time when it when it's like too far out. There's almost always some <laughs> reason to bring it up, I think. That's yeah. right. The Well, it, one of the things that Mark and I are both, I guess you call us pop culture historians. Would that be I accurate? Would, yes, I think that's oh, accurate. Yeah. And so one of the things that has always fascinated me about Kong, the original Kong, is that it's the archetype. It is the beginning. There is no giant monster movie before King Kong. He is the first. And everything after it had a huge impact. There would be no Godzilla without King Kong. Right. Um, I mean, the fact that the Japanese were fascinated with Kong and made bootleg films of him in the 30s, <laughs> yeah. which are sadly now missing. Oh. Um, yeah, they're, they're one of those, you know, it's a lost film. I, I'm going to... Uh, I'm gonna... I'll go so far as to say I think that King Kong 33 represents a singularity of sorts. I, I think I think it is such a an impactful film in terms of what came after it that mm -hmm. it, it it was it was a game changer before we called them that before we knew what they were and he and I think it was like decades before everybody realized exactly what the impact of kong had. Well, yeah just not just in terms of of you know uh kaiju films but but storytelling in general special effects mm -hmm. um you know there was a there there's a, there's a lot to unpack there in, in in that little you know gem of a film and it's it was so influential 
for so many people. You know, we don't get Harryhausen without King Kong. And that's right. And we don't get Phil Tippett without Harryhausen. And so we don't get Jurassic Park dinosaurs without King Kong. It's a through line, you know, and it's uh, I, I think it's it, it's interesting because, you know, pop culture is seldom linear. And uh, there are times when, um, when when you can draw a straight line. And those are almost always the movies that that we that we return to culturally as a touchstone or as a. Uh, you know, as a, well, like I, like I said earlier, a singularity, like th it changed everything. We had, we had had talkies prior to Kong and we had had silent adventure movies. In fact, we even had one called the lost world prior to Kong, but there was something about all of those ingredients in that one place, the way that they were done and the way that it was presented that, that sort of broke it open. In a way, and well, and uh, it's very rare when those sorts of things happen that we can like point to, you know what I mean? Well, I mean, I, it's interesting because one of the things that Kong does too, it it showed what film could do. At that right. point, they 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 had they didn't have that kind of big spectacle like that. I mean, we had Lost World, which is for those who don't know, is the first stop motion film, I believe. Not stop oh, motion, okay. the. Um, it was yeah, well. Well, it was it, um, it was Willis's first film. It was Willis O'Brien's. Uh, yeah, so it was the first okay. use of stop motion puppetry. Uh, right, that's what there, we needed. Yeah, uh, and um, it, it it was a game changer. I mean, people. The movie was very successful. Lost World, and um, O'Brien, of course, wanted to make another movie, and he made famously started working on Creation, which was this big money sink. And mm -hmm. um, David O. Zels Zelznick, like, yeah. Who was who later did who later produced Gum of the Wind, killed it. Yeah, but because he was working at RKO at the time, but O'Brien saw not Brian uh, Cooper uh, saw yeah, exactly. saw the motion stop motion said this is what I want my creature to be done like, right? And that saved it saved O'Brien's career. Um, but my one of the things that makes King Kong work it's not just the effects it's the humanity in the film. Uh, it's very much, you know, uh, part of it is, I mean, people don't talk about it enough, but it's uh, Ruth Rose. Am I thinking the name right? Ruth Rose. Yeah, yeah. Ruth Rose, who, who is the director Shodex, Shodex's wife. And she wrote the final draft of the screenplay, and she's the one that put all this humanity in it. Hmm. Uh, a lot of the memorable lines from the movie come from her, like especially yeah. the last line in the movie. Right. You know, it's, it's, it's been 90 and, years. We can, we can spoil that. Yeah, yeah, I think it's okay. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> Has everybody seen King Kong? Uh, actually, no, you're, you're movies, right. I haven't seen it. It is yeah. kind of funny because uh, there is a, you know, obviously we have this, uh, this sort of need to anthropomorphize uh, apes anyways because of how close they are to us. And at a time when men in gorilla suits were basically a stand-in well mm -hmm. they were a stand-in for a very ugly stereotype i'm gonna say yeah yeah uh and 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 not anyone's finest hour um there is a certain maybe it's the limits of technology there's a there's a fragility to kong um that that you never really got when it was a Charles Gamora in a gorilla suit in the room, you know, with his, with his mouth open and his, his legs bent and his arms hunched and he's kind of coming towards the girl and she's like, no, keep away. And, and you're like, okay, I'm pretty sure this is representative of something. I'm just not sure yeah, what, and, because I'm seven. Um, right. But the adults. And you that. also go, that's a guy in a gorilla suit. That's the other well, thing. You, right. never... you know, as a kid, you don't, grok but there but the kong stuff right. kong's humanity uh is, is one of the wonderfully uh interesting points of debate in the in the movie and, and i love the f one of the reasons that you can tell this is a good film is it can hold more than one interpretation of itself mm. right mm -hmm. you can oh, you yeah. can look at it from a lot of different angles and from a lot of different um uh, viewpoints and through a lot of different lenses and whether or not you agree with the lens being used to look through it the 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 beats 
remain unchanged and the criticism you know sort of all comes to its own it it it, it, it eventually fought, it eventually finds its level and what we're talking about at the end is basically you know the way mankind interacts with the natural world and mm -hmm. the cavalier attitude that that humanity has with uh, animals and nature and 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 this you know feel free to drop conquer uh, colonialism and imperialism on there if you want or right. if you want just say hey it's a metaphor for you know the african american you know uh situation uh circa the 1920s and 30s um it'll hold all of that and then it'll also be mm -hmm. this amazing story <laughs> yeah you know I, uh well, about kong I, fighting a t-rex and and yeah escaping it his, is in new york okay. and running running wild i was i one of the things always struck me about that movie you were talking about um the man versus nature and the whole thing the whole cavalier attitude when they first see a dinosaur what is oh. it a stegosaurus they see yeah yeah and yeah and they shoot it and they're like and then they don't try to figure it out and they wow i've never seen anything bam 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 and then it's almost dead and they shoot it again <laughs> <laughs> well it's like, how else are you going to study it if you can't cut it open and sift through its guts thank I'm, you that's, that's i just love how cold Rick. i love how cold they are bam bam Oh, completely. Yeah, yeah. It's. I mean, well, again, that was. I think you know, uh, Rick and I went went down a rabbit hole uh, in two thousand and three. There was a lot of when when Peter Jackson's King Kong mm -hmm. uh, was was about to. Uh oh, uh, the Vintage Kong. Oh, there you some, go. Some books came out, and um, uh, a couple of really cool uh things um, um marion c cooper and ernest Schodensack and the the work that they did and of course um their natural films which they kind of mentioned carl denham doing uh their their documentaries were you know sort of anything but and and these guys were known for for getting uh crazy footage um uh, my favorite one is the is the the them burying their camera, you know, in a pit and covering and Chang, it with, right? with masks, and then and then getting elephants to stampede over them. So you got the elephants, you know, right. trampling over with well, a guy, it, the guy down below cranking the camera. Yeah. Well, the show that show that show that heck, I'm just screwing up his name. He was the one that they cranking the camera. Right. And and so He's you know, crazy. they did a they did a wonderful you know uh, documentary that involved you know uh, tigers. And they showed that tigers could, in fact, climb trees. And uh, there were there was shots of the tigers literally running up into the lens. And then what they don't show is that as soon as the tiger ran up into the lens with the camera, they would shoot the tiger out of the tree, stack it up, and then go get another tiger to film. Right. You know, so, so I, that, and there's a story in the movie he tells about somebody running away, the camera and running away from the tiger coming toward them. That's true. Right. Uh, that's a lot of people, as and Mark touched on this, a lot of people don't realize that almost all this, except for the stuff with actually Kong himself yeah. and the stuff on Skull Island, it's all true. Yeah, this it's all, all really based happened. on stuff that they yeah. dealt with and 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 yeah. crazy were, shit they got up to. <laughs> they were amazing. I mean, you read their biographies and like Cooper, especially. Oh my God, Cooper was his major. He helped train the Polish Air Force. Right after World War One, when they were when they separated from the Soviet Union, was it was it him or was it Soviet. Ernest that that uh, f that faked their age so that they could uh, uh, sign up in World War One? I, I, I think it was I him. Cooper it was, was Cooper. nuts. Yeah, yeah, and uh, he uh, and he's got a there's a statue of him in Poland. Oh, badass! For being a war hero. Nice. And he, you know he and he was captured by the Soviets during that right. during their skirmish there, and he identified as an American who ha was there just helping them, and so they didn't kill him like they would have done to the Polish people. You know they didn't torture him and stuff like right. that. And of course he got out. Um, but yeah, I mean these guys were amazing. Even if they had never made King Kong, their lives would have been really amazing. Now we probably wouldn't have heard about it. They probably would have been mostly footnotes. But um, Ruth yeah. Rose, when Ernest just met her. He was on. He was doing a documentary, and I and she was there on the documentary, and was the only woman there. And so that's where 
That's and they're on the, oh yeah on the on the, on the yeah. ship of adventure. And, uh, yeah, totally. Yeah, and yeah, it's, 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 it's I I love that that um, th that with the exception of the forty foot ape, they could <laughs> have made this movie, and it would have basically looked a lot like the most dangerous game, only with real animals. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, you know, First, that's that's what. That's what Stone Desk was filming. He right. filmed King Kong. That's he was filming it when they started King Kong, and a lot of the same cast is in both movies. Oh, um, and and yeah. the same dangerous desk. game is great. Yeah. Oh yeah. Tell so, me, yeah. um, to you, you guys tell us tell 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 me when did you guys see the? I'm assuming the 1933 movie before you saw. The seventy six movie. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't oh, remember um, not knowing, not seeing Kong, the original Kong. Okay. I mean, yeah. So I saw. And I went, remember. It's, I think I was five <clears throat> or maybe yeah. six when I saw I don't remember the not original seeing. King Kong. It played on uh, Channel Eleven. It was one of the afternoon yeah. movies that they had. Channel Eleven out of Dallas used to be called KTVT, and they were. Uh, one of these like local channels that you had back in the day. Yeah, they didn't have um, they didn't have um, net uh, you know national networks affiliated with them. Um, so most of their programming was uh, syndicated packages that they mm -hmm. would buy, and then they would cut it up in different ways. And then they they had news at night. And then they had morning shows and, and all of that. But mostly, yeah. when you went to KTVT, you went for Slam Bang Theater in the morning, which got you your lo Looney Tunes and your Stooges and your Mighty Mouses. Sweet. Or you would get home in the afternoon and they'd have like the the, the Westerns like, you know, Maverick and Bonanza. Mm -hmm. And then on the weekends, there was always a matinee. Uh, some There was late night stuff on Fridays, but then Saturday afternoon, there was usually a matinee, and, and it ran in series. They did a series of Shaw Brothers Kung Fu movies, Ooh. Ray Harryhausen films. I got such an education. I people don't people don't know when I start talking to them that I have the brains of a hundred and three year old man because <laughs> I watched all of that stuff. It went yeah. in like it was just stuff in the seventies. But I saw that's the first time I saw King Kong, and it took the top of my head off. I mean, you know, well, I was already I, like attuned to the notion that there was something behind the suit, the gorilla suit in the in the Ghostbusters Saturday morning show. But King Kong was clearly not a guy in a suit. I mean, yeah, you know, and so I saw it, up, go ahead, uh, Rick, you go. Oh, I was going to say I had a similar experience. So I, of course, I was in, I was in New Jersey when I was a kid and um, then Sunday morning. Uh, they would show they would show an American monster movie, a Japanese monster movie, and then an Abbott Costello movie every <laughs> Sunday morning. And from the age of about four until I was eleven, every Sunday I sat there and watched all three of them. Nice. Yeah. That's what I did. Um, and so I would get up, you know, and my mom. I mean, when I was like six or seven, my mom started leaving me a dollar to go walk over to the. Uh, to 7-Eleven, like it was like a two blocks. And it was great because I got to keep the change, which sure. would have been a, at that time for the Sunday paper was 75 cents. I'd have a quarter. So I could buy a comic book. Right. Or I could buy baseball cards. Yep. And and so every Sunday, that's what I did. I'd walk over there and I'd buy my stuff. And I'd come home and read my comics or play with my baseball cards and watch the movie while eating my bowl of cereal. Dude. And that's what I did every Sunday more Sunday for like, I don't know, 10 a decade. And so I'm sure I saw King Kong then, and they, they would show King Kong a lot because it's, it's like they they would show Godzilla a lot in the Japanese movies. Mm -hmm. um, so, like much like Mark, by the time I was 11, I'd seen almost all these movies. It was you know, and it, and I got really interested also early on about how these movies were made, who was doing right. them. I used sure, to read famous yeah. monsters, which a lot of people a lot of people don't know about oh, anymore. Sure, yeah, but. Um, but yeah, I saw, and, uh, I saw the 1933 King Kong third. <laughs> oh wow! I saw the 76 movie first, and then I read oh, the, the Marvel the Marvel Treasury edition. Yeah, 
mm-hmm. which sure. uh, that's that was my favorite. Had all the deleted scenes yes. in in the Treasury Edition, and then I saw King Kong versus Godzilla at one thirty in the morning on a channel much like here in Birmingham, Alabama, much like what you were saying, Mark. Right. And then I was able to uh, see the nineteen thirty three movie. <laughs> I think on laser wow. disc. Oh but, wow! Okay. Wow. So how did you, how, what was your experience when you saw, because Mark and I, of course, that's what we knew. And so we colored all the other ones. How did, what was your experience going to see that, that what I think is the best, greatest con last? It's, it was way better <laughs> than the 76 one. The 76 one was, I thought, well, this is all we have. This yeah, right. is Kong. <laughs> I thought, well, okay, th- wow, this is sorry. it. sorry. And you're yeah. like, what's the big deal? <laughs> what's the big deal? And uh, and and then I now granted I was I guess seven or eight when it uh, what in seventy six it came out so I would have seen it maybe in seventy six or seventy seven seventy eight and um, so yeah I was between six and eight years old and I thought okay this is King Kong and then when I saw the original I was like here's all the good stuff T Rex <laughs> done and done yeah yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's totally dinosaurs in this. I <laughs> yeah, why? How did they? <laughs> I've I've mentioned this before, and Rick always thinks it's funny. Uh, it I went funny. to see that movie. Okay, I know what you're going to say. I okay. went to see it in the theater, and uh, you know, as being a kid in the theater, sometimes you would you know fall asleep or whatever if the movie wasn't wasn't really good. I remember watching that movie, and I thought I had fallen asleep and missed all the dinosaurs. <laughs> I, I thought I, you, I, you, I, I really thought like I, I tricked myself into thinking, I, damn it, <laughs> I must have missed the dinosaurs <laughs> because why would you do King Kong and not have a T Rex? What I mean, <laughs> that's just silly. Oh no, it was just a big snake. Well, that made perfect yep. sense. Okay, <laughs> just <laughs> drove me nuts for and and it took and then the second time it came on it came on network television like a few years later, like seventy eight. Well, one of the, you know, like ABC, you know, Sunday night at the movies kind of the movie of the week. Yeah. Movie of the week. And I remember watching it and I, and, and, and this time I, I was like, you know, I was pinching myself. Like, there's no way I'm, I'm missing it. I'm not missing it. Nope. Weren't in there. And, and after that, I was, I, I remember cause um, they took me to go get the Burger King glasses, right? Oh. The, the King Kong mm-hmm. glasses. And, yeah. and, and, and it used the, the sort of the, um, the concept art uh, for the for the glasses, which is which is really nice, and the concept art, by the way, doesn't really look anything like the movie. Mm. I, it was just like I think what Dino De Laurentiis was using to sell his, you know, his film. Uh, and I was just cool like, I don't, I don't want those glasses anymore, Mom. I'm, I'm done. <laughs> Why can't we get glasses with the other ones on there? Honey, there are no glasses with the other ones on there. I don't know what you're even talking about. T Rexes, mom. You want dinosaur mugs? Is that what you want? No, mother. I want Kong fighting a ti- a T Rex. Get this for me. She never did. I've, I've ah. always, yeah, yeah. Never, never, never. Thanks, mom. This is what happens. This is what <laughs> really, really look. This is what this whole podcast, this whole video thing was about. We want to air out Mark's grievances about the King Kong glasses. That's the only reason. Great. I have, I've been down this road before with him. I know. So, it doesn't, it doesn't, <laughs> well. it doesn't well. It's okay, yeah, Mark. I, just love, I love the fact that Dino, Dino De Laurentiis was, he He really is, the, he giveth and he taketh away, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and the, I just love the, the very notion. It's apocryphal. I can't ever find, like, where this was said. But so many people have, have used it. It just kills me. Um, you know, he's evidently somewhere, supposedly on the record as saying, when the shark and jaws die, nobody cry. When they see Mike Kong die, everybody going to cry. <laughs> Once <laughs> yeah, again, crying, another but... <laughs> promise unfulfilled. <laughs> I watched the movie and went, what a gyp. I'm 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 the perfect age to be impacted by this, and all I could think of was oh. that guy lying there in the suit is probably getting really hot. He's sweating buckets. He's sweating buckets. I thought, I thought and, the same and, thing. And, and again, right. and it ended up being 
not that that's a bad thing. It ended up being Rick Baker, who went on to be one of the greatest gorilla men of all time. You know, mm-hmm. uh, no doubt. But but again, if he hadn't, you know, been able to do that, that you know, because of the strength of the thirty three Kong, you know, we we got basically Rick's career, you know, in a nutshell. So. It is. It's a. It's it's an amazing film. I'm 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 kind of surprised that um, I'm surprised that it doesn't rank higher when people start talking about classic cinema. And I know, it's, I, I know it's because it's so geeky. I don't know. I don't think it is. I feel well, like it just, um, as like you said, you guys said pop historians, and I feel like in my role at dragon con as the american sci-fi classics dude i feel like i gotta show this this year oh. i gotta show the 1933 because the best thing to do with something like this is to watch it with a group yes and you know and, what and, you should have mark and i be guests at dragon con we should fly us out there put us up and we'll we'll introduce the movie if perfect you, you gotta fly us out there and put us up <laughs> okay um i will start <laughs> Mark, saving I'm gonna my food time. stamps <laughs> yeah snh stamp i mean to say better, um, better, better better turn in all those pop bottles for the discount yes right? yeah <laughs> so one of the things that i was good about king kong is so amazing to me and it still is so amazing is that how it seems to bypass it seems to gen, it seems to go over generations so even people that have seen slick special effects, when they see Kong, it they'll be like, "Wow, yeah, you can see the effects." You go, "Okay, it's not as you know slick as some other things," but you can see what he's doing and you can appreciate it. Um, even especially when you're younger. Uh, I mean, I, you guys have probably heard me tell the story. I know Marcus heard me tell the story when I introduced my nephews, who my sister when they were born told me that her kids were not going to be geeks and i made it my oh. life on mission to make oh. them into geeks <laughs> oh, <I've heard>. accepted. <laughs> yes exactly. uh, so they used to stay with me a lot when they were younger and this was my my older my older nephew alex who i think was like seven five, seven at the time and his younger brother who was like five they were both young and they would come to stay with me and they used to love my video collection because you know uncle ricky had these cool videos yeah and they got into a fight over what video they're going to watch. And I said, you know what? Uncle Ricky, that's what they always call me, is uh, going to pick a video for you. We're going to watch King Kong. Well, we don't know about King Kong. We're going to watch it. So they sit down. And Alex is sitting there, sitting on my lap. And I put the video in. And Alex goes, I don't like black and white movies. And I was like, shut up. You're going to like this movie. And <laughs> we sat there. And we get to the scene where we're watching the movie and they're both, you know, watching it, you know, going the whole thing. We get to the bit with the T-Rex shows up and I right. stop the movie. Now, like, what are you doing? Oh my God. What are you, you, I, I, what? I, you know, we're losing their mind. I said, look guys, go get in your pajamas and then we'll watch the rest of the movie. We'd sit here and watch it. And that's fine. So they hurried up and got their pajamas. And they sat down and they watch, we're watching, the, we watched the rest of the movie and I get up in the morning and Stan, who's my younger nephew, I wake up and I had a King Kong action figure, the, um, uh, the uh, what you call it? Anyway, the King Kong action figure. Oh, yeah. And he had a Godzilla stuffed toy and he was reenacting the T-Rex scene. Yep. When I woke up, I thought, mission Perfect. successful. I didn't, I didn't find out until years later that Stan had never seen the New York scene. He'd fallen asleep. Oh. Oh, no. Before they got to New York. And I remember watching, I mean, it must've been like 10 years later, I watched it with him. He had never seen the scene in New York. It's like, really? You know, it. King Kong. <laughs> so, but anyway, it, it's but the storytelling. The geeks. It's the storytelling. Yeah. There, there is a story. Mm-hmm. There is a storybook quality to the film. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't. You don't see it in a lot of in a lot of movie making from that time period. Um, you see it in a lot of movie making now. <laughs> uh, you, no, you really don't. I mean, as much as I <laughs> as much as I love a lot of the Harryhausen movies, they get a little talky from time to time. Mm-hmm. And there's an economy of language uh, in Kong that is mm-hmm. completely story driven. Nobody says anything that does not speak to plot or character or motive. There's no wasted space. There's no florid language. And um, I had a similar experience. I, we, you know, at the theater, I'll take kids around. Uh, sometimes we have scouting troops. The last scout troop I had, it came through. They wanted to 
get the the lay of the land and then they wanted to watch a movie and so um they didn't have a lot of time i said well how about king kong and they went yeah okay that'll work i mean they just sure whatever you think so we started talking about you know like fantasy films and how this was what what's cool about this is this was like really the first one this is the one that kind of started it and they were like are we going to watch the the one that the the one I've seen it the King Kong with the thing I've seen and I'm like you haven't seen this and they're like how do you mean and so it started I could see them they all just kind of slumped down in their chairs as soon as the black and white thing hit <laughs> yeah and, and and right when the, and I I had the advantage of knowing when the T-Rex was going to show up cuz you know and so I just <laughs> did this and look over my shoulder as the T-Rex, you know, wanders into the frame and, and, and doesn't quite realize what kind of danger she's in yet. Every one of those boys, jaded, jaded, hardened, you know, career criminal <laughs> boy scouts, right. You know, nothing <laughs> us. they're all like this watching the movie, just wide eyed, sitting forward in their chair. Nobody's breathing. I'm just like, that's the power of Kong. Man. See, and that's one of the things I wish I could have done is experience King Kong on screen the first time. Yeah. That's something that, I mean, having seen it on the big screens as an adult, oh my God. It that is, movie is... I, I will, yeah. The first probably 20 times I've watched it was on a television. And even, same here, yeah. even with the good TVs now. Um, not the same. Yeah. It's not the same. And, and, and specifically because there's a lot of stuff that happens in the corners mm -hmm. of the film and yep. you re and, and the, the TV would just eat it. You know, that round, that slightly rounded screen. Mm -hmm. I never saw it. Um, I think probably Rick, I think the last time you and I watched it was when Ray was at the Ray Harryhausen was at right. the draft house in the theater. Yeah. And, and that's the first time I saw on big screen. Okay, oh. and so we were we were pointing <laughs> at the corners. You can see all kinds of cool stuff happening in the corners, mm -hmm. and that's part of the storytelling yeah. canvas, which was really interesting. Um, the creatures and stuff, and he would have like when you get to Kong's lair, you know, and there's un it's like lava on the bottom down there, or, you know, underneath. Oh yeah, you're like holy crap, where'd this come from? <laughs> and, and, and there's, and there's like transitional shots where it goes from you know like a uh, live action person. Uh, to stop motion animated cross, then behind the stalactite, and then they back out, and it's live action again. And it's like that was a lot of work for something that I didn't see for the first twenty five <laughs> years of my life. Holy crap, yeah. that was a lot of work. Yeah, it was a totally yeah. different experience. Um, and anybody listening to this, if you've never seen King Kong on the big screen, make it a goal to go see it. It Try. really is worth it. Yeah, as big um, as you can get it. Is it. Worth seeing. Yeah. The uh, also another thing that's interesting about Kong, we did, Kong that we saw when we were kids is quite a bit different than the Kong that they show now, because King Kong yep. was a pre-code film before the Hayes Code. Okay. And so they cut out things like um, there's a scene when Kong, you, you the image that you were in the background here, you know, when yeah. Kong, the lech Kong looking through the window, uh, he takes that woman and he drops her when he realizes that it's not, you know, it, it's not her. <laughs> He just I did not know that. It. Yeah, and it's in the film, and, but we didn't know it either. We could, he he eat. I remember mean, the first time I see him eating somebody. It's like uh, I don't remember that. Yeah, I mean, Kong yeah. literally eats people. <laughs> it's been thankfully it's been reconstructed now. All the basically oh, the yeah. scant Kong is is out, but yeah, the Kong I first saw, you know, uh, in the was, on TV didn't have Kong eating the natives and didn't have Kong stepping on the native. And then oh, yeah, going. stepping on the native again and grinding it in. Yeah. yeah. That wasn't Just in there. Mad. I mean, it was still it was cool. Insult. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, or or um, when he's undressing um, Faye and, he's, and he starts sniffing his finger. <laughs> it's like, Come on, dude. Man. <laughs> Come on, Kong. <laughs> yeah. For some reason they thought that wasn't appropriate. I don't know what they were thinking. You know. I, uh... <laughs> Come on, buddy. I, I yeah, gorilla's gonna gorilla. What can I say? <laughs> yeah, I mean, hate the ape, don't hate the game. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it was a different King Kong than we saw later. I mean, 
we didn't know about I didn't know about these things. I mean, other it people is, didn't know. It's a, little, it's a little unfortunate that some of the stuff that they put back in. I mean, I'm glad that they did because I believe yeah. that I believe that films should be complete, even films that were um, uh, mistaken in a viewpoint. Mm -hmm. Because I don't oh, think yeah. you can have a good conversation about how they got it wrong if you never see how they got it wrong, right? right. Mm -hmm. so, but there, the, but there's definitely some stuff that got cut out of the sort of um, stereotypical African tribal people, you know, with the wide eyes and the, the sticking up hair. And it's really, you know, it's not good. You know, it's very, no, you know, it's, now it's, now it's, it's really deep, offensive. Back then it was just like, oh, come on guys, you know, what are you doing? But uh, well, yeah, I, I'm, it's, it's a, and it's a testament actually that they've put Kong back together complete. I mean, Warner Brothers cartoons don't get but that kind of consideration. The one scene that's never. Well, yeah, um, but there's the one thing that they don't put back, and it never will is the famous spider scene. Right. Because it was destroyed completely. There was a what? scene that when they when when Kong is hitting it with the log and he's shaking them off, they fall into the pit. And in the original version of the movie, they go you they go you see what happens to them. In that pit, and there's these spider like demon creatures that eat them. And mm -hmm. it was apparently so repulsive, people were getting sick in the theater and they couldn't release it. They, the studio refused to release it with that scene intact. The, I and believe so they the edited note it out was completely. It stopped the movie cold. <laughs> uh, yeah. And so um, Peter Jackson they, recreated it from notes. I remember, yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and he, the, uh, yeah, he Kong recreated DVD. it. I think, he, I, think he, I think he got a little too overzealous. But I well, appreciate yeah. the effort. The mm -hmm. only thing that's left of that sequence is when um, is when Jack comes up out of the little divot where he's at, and you can see and they, yeah. a, a two-legged sort of lizard sort of mm -hmm. trying to climb up and then fall off. That's one of the things in the pit that has, has gorged itself on uh, members of the venture. Uh, so... <laughs> But yeah, yeah, and that's a legendary scene. It was thought, you know, because in the seventies there was rumor, you know, it was it was discovered that there were different versions of the film. Famous monsters covered it and talked about the missing spider sequence, and you know, there there were all these sort of like notes, and it, it's a cool kind of a Hollywood legend. Um, but mm -hmm. uh, I don't know that it I don't know that it would have helped. No. It's just an interesting little, it's one of those little footnotes, like, oh, wow, you know. Um, but a lot of stuff they put back in, you know, it's like, oh, sure. And it it also makes, um, it shows Kong being more of a beast, a yeah. creature, uh, as opposed to, um, and in some ways it helps, you know, uh, because you know, he's not a human. <laughs> right. He's not, you know, he's still going to be, you know, he's still an ape. Just the notion an animal. This is the notion that he's, you know, eating people like chicken wings is <laughs> part of, you know, uh, that yeah. part of that's just, you know, but, but here's the deal. The callback on that is when he's in New York, right? I mean, right. yeah, that's when he starts picking people up and nope, not her. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. yeah. He was very single minded. He knew what he needed, he wanted. Yep. Yeah. Um, yes, one thing you you is interesting, Mark. You were talking about the lack of respect for this film, or not being higher up. You know, it was like I think it was one of the first. It was one of the first Criterion films. Oh, King Kong. Mm -hmm. When they first did their laser disc, when they first came out, it was in their first batch of films. <clears throat> That's cool. So it puts in that level of respect. They like, well, Criterion is doing it. And that means well, a lot. Criterion has I Criterion think. has always been a little bit more open minded about stuff. Thank God. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm I'm. Well, yeah. I'm grateful for what they've decided to include in the in their in their sets. There's been some some films that I never thought I'd see get the Criterion. You know, uh, you mean Godzilla. God. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, all the Shin Godzillas or not the Shin the the original. Um, thank you. And um, yeah, you know, like the the um, the Fiend Without a Face. I mean, there's some really like transgressive and sort of edgy sort mm -hmm. of things in the Criterion vaults i love that kong's included yeah. that's good news uh yeah we're, we're gonna 
but we'll 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 be talking about Kong in another 10 years and I guarantee you know there will be other things to to say about it uh uh that that's a that's a movie that keeps on giving now let's talk yeah. uh for a minute um and I, I didn't want to I wanted to talk specifically about the 90 year old movie uh I'm I'm happy that we have current Kong movies. Yes. The Kong of Skull Island is so good. No, uh, yeah. I mean, it, it's a good it, movie. To, it, it to me is um, clo as close to the feeling I got watching the 33 movie. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. Peter Jackson's really movie. movie, while technically adequate not so much as the as he, far as the um he, his movie the peter jackson movie breaks one of my rules of monster movies and i actually throw it as a rule is they shouldn't be that long so like like the original kong is 100 minutes oh. when they put all the stuff back in it was 100 minutes and ideally you want 90 but you can go to 100 but you know get any much longer than that it's too long because it's only long so long people suspend their disbelief ah you don't you know, you, it's hard to keep somebody's attention and suspend their disbelief for much longer than that. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and the and, thing um, is, is at the 90 minute mark on Jackson's King Kong, they're just now pulling up to the island. Yeah. I was going to say there is a, uh, a comedy group, a, a comedy music band called Tripod, and they do a song called Get to the Effing Monkey. <laughs> and the, whole, the song is about. It's about movies that don't get to the point, like Titanic, right. <laughs> and um, uh, and and the Peter Jackson King Kong movie does yeah. not get to the effing monkey nearly quick enough. Right. It's like these are humans. I don't care about humans in in these movies. That's right. That's right. Now, I will say that when when Kong shows up and when the the dinosaurs start showing up. Mm -hmm. on skull island i could watch nine hours of that uninterrupted mm -hmm. with david attenborough commentary i would just yeah. be happy to watch <laughs> and hit another sailor has moved into this area and you'll see right now that the velocipede is going to jump on his head and destroy his neck and there he goes i just <laughs> i could watch i could watch nine hours of that in a, in a row i loved what i i like the fact that his kong is on 11 but it's it is uneven you know, um, I like the choice. And it doesn't of age having, that well. I like the choice of having Carl Denham be an Orson Welles kind of a character. I don't sure. think Jack Black hit that mark all the time. I think sometimes he did, and sometimes he didn't. And I think he flubs. It was Beauty Killed the Beast. And there is no greater sin. <laughs> than to you had one job. Jack yeah. Black. Yeah, that they should have shot that first and then filmed backwards. You know? <laughs> no effects, no island stuff, nothing. We got to get this. Yeah, right now. Well, they yeah, won. we were just talking about how it, it what makes Kong special is is not just the effects; it's the humanity of the story. And if you don't have that bit, then it doesn't it doesn't work. So, like the '76 Kong, that's one of the problems with it. You were talking about the no dinosaurs, but the biggest sin about it is you just don't care about anything in the movie yeah you don't care about any of the characters you don't care about because there's no humanity there's no soul to the movie right um and so if if, if they had managed to do that somehow and not had dinosaurs you would have probably forgiven that because you still yeah. would have had a good time, enjoyed yourself it would have been yeah it would have even it as a have kid, been so to speak it wouldn't have been technically speaking king kong for my mind but it would i think it would have been a better movie i think kong of skull island uh, I think it picks up some of the things that Dino De Laurentiis as Kong dropped, um, and I think it did him. I think it did it a lot better. Um, From my comments, <laughs> yeah, I, it's not. I yeah, it's not. Um, I, you know, I, I there's the, the interaction of Kong with the people, and the scale of Kong being you know you know titan sized um th those are those are artifacts and they may and they may just be you know orphans you know of 
De Laurentiis's, you know, notion of that. But the idea about um, people kind of existing in this larger setting and having there be a, sort of a scramble for resources, I, I, I think the Kong of Skull Island, the new movie, um, feels more like what they maybe would have done if they'd had larger than a $19 special effects budget. Because remember, <laughs> it's Dino De Laurentiis. Yes. He's only going to pay so much for the, for the special effects, okay? If you can put the guy in the suit, why do we need anything else, huh? That's the Kong. We don't need a we don't need a T Rex. We got a snake. He's a, he's a big snake. He's a scary snake. Wrap it around you, Rick. Yeah, thrash it. It make it look good. You know. <laughs> but but that having the scale of of Skull Island uh, to me was I think sort of essential, uh, especially if you're going to have him fight Godzilla, which is kind of what we all wanted, anyways. So you know, what I'm going to do. Yeah. I, so, yeah, Rick, say something brilliant. I just come on. Agree. I was just thinking about how Dino Dino De Laurentiis he actually had the audacity to make a sequel to his King Kong, <laughs> which <laughs> may be the single worst King Kong movie ever. Okay, um, now believe it or not, then, it is streaming on Tubi right <laughs> now, and oh, I, I watched go. it no joke <laughs> a month ago. Did you I have really seen it recently? Oh wow! It's something. Did it, it's, it's it is something. It is something. Yeah, it Linda Hamilton. Great. I'm sure. So I'm sure that's really prominent on her. Uh, you know, she, she's because oh man, the heart transplant. Oh my god. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's it's <laughs> terrible. And because uh, then I started thinking about because we hadn't talked about Son of Kong, which of course right. was the first King Kong sequel, sort of, and. Um, and Son of a Kong was, it was if those who don't know, it was a rushed movie they did after the success of King Kong. Nine months. As yeah. King, nine months of doing King Kong took years. Um, this took they did it nine months, and it and it still looks cool, but it looks like it took nine months. And the script is not near as good. And it's, it's basically this albino little tiny ape, mm -hmm. and um, the and uh, they, yeah. What it's got going it, for it is that Driscoll actually has a change of heart. You know, mm -hmm. he does seem now granted his motivations are still uh, monetary. You know, right. if I can if I can get this, it will get me out of all the lawsuits. Yeah, that I'm involved like the in. first 10 minutes of the movie. He's trapped in an apartment in New York. Yeah, he, he's like, man, oh, yeah. I'm being Should sued be. by everybody. <laughs> But but then you know the, the the idea you know there, there's a the, the notion of saving you know the the baby Kong is um, you know initially it's sort of mercenary and then after a while I think he we we see him sort of realize that maybe if he hadn't have come here in the first place none of this would have happened but you know it takes him a while to get there because by the end of Kong he has not learned his lesson you know oh no. Ah, it wasn't the airplanes. It was beauty killed the beast. Yeah, pedal your ducks somewhere else, buddy. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you, you dumbass. <laughs> you were the one that took him off I, the island. I don't care what you want, how you want to spin it. You know, yeah. uh, your alternate facts aren't. We're going to work on. Don't me come to me something. with your alternate facts. You sent the beauty through right. the island. That's okay. right. <laughs> yeah, you know, one of the things that always bothered me was I was younger about. King Kong was how the hell did they get him from the island back to New York? Well, you know, Peter Jackson I, answered that, I, didn't they? You know, yeah, but but that you know, was, it's one of those things, and it's funny because you're watching this movie and there's all this stuff. Oh, I'm okay with the giant ape, and I'm okay, but right, how do they get <laughs> how do they get him back to New York? The logistics of how how big was that boat? How did they <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, they talk about how the boat had this huge crew and a much bigger crew. Of course, Kong ate a bunch of them before, so sure. yeah. <laughs> they didn't come back. Yeah. Or All the sailors that died were basically <laughs> freeing up room on the stateroom for uh, for Kong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and also, they've got to keep him gassed the entire trip. It just seems like, you know... Uh, it's, it, seems, it seems terrible, yes. Yeah. And, and again, and, 
it it, it only adds to the kind of like oh <laughs> poor <Yeah>. Kong. <laughs> That was one of the things that I think Jackson really got. I think Jackson really sold the the idea of of this out, out of place animal in a mm -hmm. world that he doesn't understand. And uh, I thought I thought I thought that final sequence in in Jackson's King Kong was was brilliant. I I have no notes. You know, I, I I thought it was everything where everything from when they're sitting up there, the 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 from from the part where you know Kong goes beautiful and she says that's right beautiful and as she says it and he's looking at her you see the biplanes in the distance. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> at that point, I just started crying. I knew what was coming. I didn't care. I just started weeping. Oh, it's the worst. Uh, <laughs> If I remember right, the Toho films of the King Kong Escapes, that was the first time I ever saw where they kind of explained it. Isn't that the one where they build a, a wooden plank, a giant yes. wooden thing they put oh, behind yeah. it, and they have him tied to it? After, or was that, oh, uh, yeah, and then later they put him on the balloons. And yeah, but <laughs> it, so it, isn't those, that one? No, the balloons are in, that's in King Kong versus Godzilla. Okay, but, yes. No, King Kong God, versus Godzilla. Scary, I know this. Yeah, but in, of course, King Kong Escapes has Mecha, God, Mecha Kong, so yes. A whole my, uh, my 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 big memory from King Kong versus Godzilla is when the newscaster is prepare is showing. Well, Godzilla's brain is a dinosaur sized brain, and I'm like, you asshole! Godzilla's cool. Why <laughs> are we? Well, and then he's still a bad guy at this point. It's, yeah, it's only his third movie. And then, um, it's well, just, well, Kong's brain, though, must be 10 times as big as this regular ape brain. And so what they're saying is Kong is... Well, because he's 10 times as Yeah, exactly. The size thing was always... Uh, that's the, something you can argue about for the next 90 years. But... Uh, have either one of you seen the, the Japanese version of King Kong versus Godzilla? Now, there's the urban legend about how the ending's different, which is bullshit. The ending's the same. But really? the movie in Japanese had extra scenes in it, and it's much better than the American oh. version. Well, I'm... It's actually a really much more entertaining movie. Well, I'm today years old when I found that okay. found that out. So what, what else is in King Kong versus God in the Japanese version? They just have extra scenes. It's like some of the humorous bits work a lot better. Yeah. They're kind of stretched out a little bit, and they work better. And the, I the whole the last time I saw it, I saw that one. Yeah, it's just it's I can't tell you exactly. I just I remember I was surprised when I was watching, going, "Wow, this is much better." And um, it, it wasn't like the effects were better or anything. The timing was better, it was paced better, because you know it got chopped up when it came over here. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and of course, hearing it in its original language with subtitles makes it a better movie. You know, you get the right emotions and everything. Um, yeah, I was really impressed with it and how much how much better it was. Um, I mean, it's still not great. I mean, the giant and this the giant octopus on land is still idiotic attacking sure. the village, but <laughs> especially that it's a real but octopus. It, That's sort of the, yes. you know, I I just I watched that and I go, oh, you wacky Japanese, you know, so, it just I don't get you guys sometimes. Those special effects are so good that it looks like a real a real a real uh, octopus. <laughs> I, ju um, I just I I I just hope the octopus made scale. I, you know, yeah. oh, <laughs> I just, you know, Good night, he couldn't have gotten day wages for that. That's, that's hard, you know? So, okay. So we all, um, of course, the point of the whole, this whole thing, see the 1933 film. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Having said that, once everyone follows our instructions as they should. Right. What's the second Kong thing. What's number two on the list of Kong quality productions? What should you see after? I'm gonna, you know, there there have been a lot of um, uh, stories, uh, novels, and novelizations of Kong mm -hmm. based off of the um, the pulp 
novelization, which is in the public domain, yeah. which is why it's been reprinted so many times, based on which is really uh, good too. Huh? The novelization is really good, actually. Yeah, that yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's very good, and it has a different ending. It's what I mean, I Kong use, still dies. Right. It's what but I it's, used it's for the. Um, it's what I used for the um, the radio play that the we radio did. Play. Oh, nice. And Mark, did a, Mark did a radio play. For those that don't know, I did a radio play adaptation of the original King Kong. Nice. It was really brilliant. Yeah. I think I knew this. I knew this. It was a few years ago. And it was, yeah, had it was a very a addictive song. Uh, oh, uh, it's an earworm. Um, <laughs> the, um, I, you know, I, I honestly think you can skip a lot of the other pop cultural stuff. I think you could probably, if you just to sort of, I think scratch the itch, go ahead and watch Jackson's Kong because, you know, there's something about getting that story short and then getting it long. You'll really kind of decide which way you, you come down either way on it, you know? Um, but I think, I think, I don't think that what's, what doesn't work in Jackson's King Kong, uh, means you have to throw the whole thing out. I think what does work works better than what doesn't work. Yeah. If that makes sense. So well, and I, would, I would go there. And then, for, yeah. and then from there, you've got kind of like some platforms. You can either hit, head over to Godzilla or King Kong versus Godzilla, which is a, a, a classic, you know, but for totally different reasons. You know, there is not, there's not a locked in, uh mythology or a or a lore or a right yeah there's not a chronology aside from skull island and giant ass gorilla ape that you know fights uh other prehistoric things outside of that pretty much everybody that's that's had a whack at it has done it differently i can't you know there's not a consensus um uh, which uh, that's kind of interesting yeah, they. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a real serious drop in quality when you get beyond the original King Kong. Yeah, um, there's been a lot of other eight movies. You know, there's a uh, you know Queen Kong. Uh, you know, <laughs> oh. um, and um, um, the, the Korean film, the uh, Ape. Are these horrible, and you'd watch them thinking, "Oh, good, it's another giant ape movie." You think maybe it'll be good. It's not. Um, it's not. Uh, let me save you. Uh, and I've watched all these. Uh, yeah. Kong, Kong is a singular event. I mean, it, it really is this. I mean, there are other good ape movies, but not about giant apes. I mean, Planet of the Apes is an amazing movie. Okay. But it's not like King Kong. They're completely different right. movies. Right. Speaking, yeah. of that, only... let, speaking of that, let me recommend um, a few years ago, there was a King Kong on the Planet of the Apes comic book series. Yes. It was, Please yeah. go find that. Yeah, it's high art. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But go ahead. Yeah. Uh, but they're not, I mean, there's a huge drop. There's, I mean, I've written about eight films and before, and it's like Son of Kong is probably still in the top 10 of best eight films, which tells you a lot of how there aren't that many great eight films. The, the Son of Kong is not a good movie. The Cliff. It's a fun yeah. movie at times. Yeah. So you yeah. got Kong, Planet of the Apes, and then you know, <laughs> um, off. yeah. And then you yeah, got uh, Every Which Way But Loose is in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's a, a that's tough. Hmm. And it's not like with the ape sequels where there's some of the ape sequels are actually pretty good. Mm -hmm. Some of them have a decent movies in their own right. The stuff that made after King Kong, they're all kind of derivatives. Actually, you know what the second no, my you know what the best movie to go see after King Kong is Mighty Joe Young. Oh okay. yeah, of course, Mighty Joe Young, the original yeah, Mighty Joe Young, which is yeah, the exact yeah, yeah. same people, and yep. uh, which is an amazing movie. Uh, yep, uh, and it's rewatchable. Um, the only big problem with it is Mighty Joe Young's size changes throughout the throughout the. Film. Oh, uh, okay. you you but, got there early, yeah, Sherman. Yeah, you Mighty don't really know Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah I. Yeah. Um, it's an amazing film, and also one of the few movies where the. Uh, uh, one of the few movies where the the sequel also works. Um, oh yeah, the the sequel, the one with Charlie Theron. Um, the remake, you mean? Yeah, the remake, not the sequel. Yeah, yeah, the, the remake. remake is actually pretty good. The remake is actually remakes. really good, uh, and mm -hmm. will have you sobbing inside of thirty seconds. 
yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. No, there's, some, a... there's some cool things in Mighty Joe Young uh, that are kind of worth kind of spotting. Um, that was the that was the first uh, commercial stuff that Harryhausen did. Uh, he was helping. Yeah, he was uh, the OB. assistant to O'Brien in that film. Yep, and uh, the scene where Joe is playing tug of war with all of the guys. Uh, <laughs> all the keep wrestlers an eye and out. stuff. Yeah, you keep an eye out for the uh, the the strong man in the leopard skin, right? You know, print. That's Rondo Hatton. Oh, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, tiny little, yeah. just like oh. If you blink, you miss it. You know, one of the few that. things that he did where he wasn't the creeper. You know, <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah. They, and uh, and also they played up the the really sympathetic the hero ape. I mean, he was a big hero. Oh yeah, yeah. Movie. They they yeah. Uh, it 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 carries through on the whole idea that the the. Well, I think they I think they weren't counting on the reaction. I don't think they knew what the reaction was going to be with Kong. I think they were trying to do a. Oh yeah. I'd have been I'd have been really surprised if they'd been that forward thinking, but I mm-hmm. think that Mighty Joe Young is is really a reaction to their reaction. Like, oh, okay, mm-hmm. so we can do this and be sympathetic, you know. Uh, and, and in fact, it's the, the the film is in many ways, it's almost a call and response to King Kong. Here's sort of the other side of this, you know. Anyway, mm-hmm. really good, yeah. Highly well, recommend. it's funny or interesting. It had destroyed that film. Pretty much destroyed Willis O'Brien's career, though. It was a huge flop. I um, know. Um, yeah, I know. And he would never did any, never did stop motion again after that movie, if I remember right, um, because yeah. it was expensive and time consuming. It, at the time, and, it was uh, too expensive, and I, and it was Harryhausen that that was the one that had to figure out how to do it on the cheap, or it was never going to mm-hmm. be sustainable. Which sucks because I want. The War Eagles, so bad. I, I want someone to do it now. And I don't care how yeah. stupid it would be. I, I could give a shit. Oh. I need Vikings fighting Nazis on giant eagles, throwing spears into Messerschmitts, and 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 uh, diving down into the Forbidden Valley to get food while uh, outrunning Allosauruses. I need that. Yeah. I need that. I think we all do. Yeah. Oh, I think course. that's yeah. maybe well, a good place to leave it. <laughs> but go, okay. Rick, go ahead. <laughs> well, no, I was just going to say that, I mean, you know, Willis O'Brien was supposed to be making, for the Japanese, he was making, well, here in the States, and then the Japanese bought the rights to it, was making Frankenstein versus King Kong. Right. Which became Godzilla versus King Kong. Yeah. And oh, King Kong versus Godzilla. And it also became the one with the giant, the guys growing, um, the Japanese film. What am I thinking of? Mark, you know um, what I'm talking about. The genetically modified guys and what's the name of that movie? I like it too. It's uh, and there's two of them, right? Um, and uh, they fight. They become giant. It, it, those were the bases that they, they both uh, they grew out of that movie. Gargantuan. Thank, thank you, Sherman. Sherman. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I like that movie a lot. And uh, and so it the, it was interesting how O'Brien had this big effect. And he wasn't part of the production of those films. But I remember right, yeah, he never really that was put together. Sold yeah, he never really got to. I don't. I don't think he ever really lived long enough to sort of get his due. You know, uh, the last thing he worked on, unfortunately, was a movie called Black Scorpion. Uh, it's not good. It got MST three K. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. and uh, the, the, it was really. Um, he, he he was he was he was always a drinker, but his alcoholism had become a real problem, and so mm-hmm. you only get a little bit of the stop motion stuff, and it's not anybody's best work. But by then, you know, thankfully Harryhausen was was doing stuff, and and you know, almost everything he's ever done, he's basically you know, he he's never he was never shy about name checking Obi and King Kong as being you know. This is the thing that that got me my start. So, you know, again, you don't get Jason and the Argonauts without King Kong. You don't get Mm-mm. Clash of the Titans oh, no. without King Kong. You don't get, you know, uh, the Valley of Guanji or Seventh Voyage of Sinbad. And, well, and you don't get Jim Danforth and and Dave Allen. And so, you know, that's the guy that did the the dragon in Dragon Slayer. And uh, oh. Jim Danforth did when dinosaurs ruled the earth. And Phil Tippett did 
the the chessboard pieces in Star Wars when R two D two is playing Chewbacca, and so all of this stuff, it, it's it it's a it's a family tree that's basically a shrub that grows in on itself like wisteria, and then chokes <laughs> and dies. I all right, I lost the metaphor, but I think you, you know where I'm going yeah. with this. You know? <laughs> Well, tell everybody where you guys and your stuff can be found. Uh, Rick, tell people where um, uh, you, your, uh, your, your books and all your other stuff can be, can uh, people can pick those up. Well, I mean, Apes of Wrath, you can get it, it's still in print, it's still available. Mm -hmm. um, you could get it from Tachyon Publications at their website, or you could ask your books bookstore to get it. It's also available digitally, and Mark likes the idea because he's in that book. And yeah. uh, <laughs> and uh, the uh, yeah, that's available. Um, yeah, that's leave it. And also, I do, I've been doing a lot of editing. I just edited two new books that are coming out from Tachyon this summer. Oh, um, uh, Josh um, Roundtree's first novel, which eight people will probably be interested in because it's about a, it's um, the legend of Charlie Fish, which is a weird western with a gill man. Okay. I'm in. And um, nice. yeah, it, it takes place in Texas in uh, early 20th century in Texas. And the finale is during the Galveston hurricane. Quite excited to read that. I'm a, nice. I'm a big fan. Yeah. I've known Josh for a yeah. while. And he's good. Yeah. It's a really good novel. And, uh, and then I also got coming out, I edited um, things get ugly. The, uh, the best short story, the best crime short stories of Joe R. Lansdale. Oh, fun. Which, not, well, I wouldn't call it fun. It's not but, fun. <laughs> That's no, not a. It's agree disturbing, to disturbing. You know, but it's really good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Joe's, well, you know, uh, maybe I'll, let, me, let me rewind that and change my adjective. I mean, but, uh, and his it, it, Joe's version of the crime is not like everybody else's. So no, <laughs> it's a bit askew. Yeah, it's great, but yeah, that's what I've got going on. And uh, Mark, uh, you can find me at my um, uh, my home away from home. Actually, it's just my home. Uh, the North Texas <laughs> Apocalypse Bunker dot com is where the blog lives. Uh, and uh, I have a free Substack newsletter that I send out weekly. Uh, and uh, you can sign up for that there. Um, I do some. Uh, movie media tv talking but i also show pictures of the dog and whatever else is going on in my life uh every once in a while i'll break out an interesting essay that's free and it always will be uh you can find um uh gaming and role-playing stuff that i've written on drive through rpg and you can find uh fiction and comics that i've worked on uh at amazon and uh other uh online places like that um uh oh and uh over on the um 42 cast i podcast in oh, yeah, yeah. over there uh i can i can i can be googled so uh Mark's feel in. free to, to do, drop drop some google foo on my unsuspecting ass and see what all the robert e howard stuff comes up i'll be at robert e howard days at the end of april okay uh, yeah we, so uh, that's the that's the hundredth anniversary of Weird Tales, did, and so did they um, move the Robert Howard days? We yeah, we're trying it. Uh, we're trying it on a month uh, that's not one hundred and thirty five degrees uh, Kelvin. Um, yeah, you know, yeah. like the first. I might actually go weekend in June. April. Yeah, end end of end of it's down to uh, end of April is is technically still breathable and livable in Texas, and so we're giving it a shot. <laughs> see how that works. Mm -hmm. So links to all these things will be in the comments and in the uh, in the um, in the show notes on YouTube and wherever else. So you can find these two guys, and you can find me in live action in a few months at Dragon Con and probably some other places. And um, if you want to drive to Gadsden, Alabama. I'm hosting and announcing pro wrestling shows every Saturday. So, <laughs> You're living the dream, man. You know, <laughs> it, that's a good gig. It's a 
pretty sweet gig. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm not making that up. But um, Mark, Rick, um, thank you very much. We are going to do another sure, three-hour edition of this kind of thing very soon. And um, I cannot wait to talk to you guys again. Yes, Everybody yeah. out there watching, if you're whether you're watching it live or where you're watching this later, thank you. And um, we we love you guys. We will see you very soon. And get your colonoscopies, for goodness sake. <laughs> I'll talk to you. Bye, guys.